We're focused on the visit by President Trump to the United Kingdom this morning and his statements around Brexit. Um, give us your up-to-date thoughts on the latest on the Brexit conversation, how much that is influencing your asset allocation to the UK. I mean, when we looked at UK assets, whether these are equities or gilts or a pound, um, we have to say that a lot of these assets have been depressed by the political risk and the whole political discussion uh, around Brexit. Uh, the fact that the UK is now moving apparently in a more clear way to a soft Brexit means that the UK economy is likely to see less headwinds. And so, for example, with respect to the pound, which is one of the most undervalued G10 currencies at the moment, that would be positive uh, for, the, for the pound. When you look at interest rates in the UK, once again, they are so low as they are now because of all the risk premia, because of what is being priced in, in terms of negative impact of Brexit on the economy. Should that uh, alleviate, then UK yields uh, should also move higher. Mm -hmm. And we are also quite positive on the UK equity market, which has defensive qualities. Nanette, just want to uh, pick up on your comments on sterling because Bloomberg spoke to some strategists ahead of the Chequers plan actually being released and uh, one of them said that we could see sterling move to 134 in the event that Theresa May managed to get her plan through. Now she has certainly got a plan together. Whether that gets accepted by the EU is another question, but we're not at 134 on sterling. We're at 131.68. So how much upside actually is there? I mean, there is significant upside, um, and in some sense, uh, it, it may very well be that some of the recent comments uh, from U.S. President uh, make the discussion with uh, with the EU uh, a little bit more more easy. That could be a catalyst, for example, for the pound to recover.